Welcome back to P2. Today we're looking at binomial estimation, unit 4.5. So first things first, this comes up pretty much every single exam. It's usually just one part of a binomial question, like a part B or a part C, uh, where you have to use your expansion to estimate the value of a specific value, uh, number or question, like something to the power of within your question. Now, a lot of people will look at these kinds of questions and say, well, what's the point? I can just literally type that into my calculator. And obviously that is true. A lot of the values of the numbers that you do deal with in this, you can do that. Um, but the idea of it is that it can be used for more things. So this is, you know, later on in your careers, you might use this in a slightly other way. This is kind of like the building blocks of that. And what kind of happens is that as X is often usually a number that is less than one, or kind of more specifically say between zero and one, um, what you would then mean is that as you do your expansion and the powers of X increase in size, well, those larger powers get closer and closer to zero, so they they're almost can be not counted which means that you're able to estimate the value of something just from the initial part of the expansion. Hope that kind of makes sense as kind of why you do it. Um, let's get stuck into a question. So the first part of the question will always involve some sort of expansion like this. So expand the first four terms of one minus three X to the power 25. And there we have it, just sped up a little bit for you there, as we know how to do this already. Now, next part then is where we use this expansion for our estimation. So then the second part looks something like this. Use your answer to part A to estimate the value of 0 0.997 to the power 25. And what you've got to do is compare that now with what we had. So. If I think about this, we've got 1 minus 3x to the 25 equaling 0 0.997 to the 25. So if you can't spot what x should be straight away, you can always do this as an equation, as a simple solve. And you can go, well, 1 minus 3x equals... Oops, sorry. Started writing too many there. And then you can go, well, rearrange it, and we get 0 0.003, and we can see that x is 0 0.001. Which, for some of you, will go, well, yeah, that was obvious. You can spot it, you know, straight from here. We've got 3x there, so, you know, 0 0.001, three times, gives this to 1. But, yeah, you can work out as an equation. You can just do it straight from seeing it straight away. Okay, so as I said, we know that x is 0 0.001 and we want to substitute this into our 1 minus 3x to the power 25. Okay, so 1 minus 3x to the power 25. And this is going to be our 0 0.997 to the power 25. And this is approximately, so it's 1 minus 75 times 0 0.001 plus 2,700 times 0 0.001 squared minus 62,100 times 0 0.001 cubed. Obviously, this could go on forever with the expansion, but I'm just adding such a small number each time that it becomes less important. And then we get 0 0.927639, uh, which we will want to round off to something appropriate. So three, four decimal places will be fine. 
often it is given to us in a question. Okay? And the reason it's often given to us is that sometimes then you get a part C like this. And then this one, not every exam will have this, but quite a few do, where it's usually calculated the value of the exact answer and then calculate the percentage error. So percentage error is in effect percentage change. So all you want to do is you want the difference over the original times 100. So what that means is I want the difference between the two values. So you always want a positive answer, so just the biggest takeaway, smallest. So in this case, we've got nine, two, seven, six, three, eight, nines, and so on from my calculator. That's uh, this value minus my 0 0.92763799. And then that's going to be over my original amount, which is my 0. Point, well, it's basically my 0. 0.997 to the 25, or this value here. And then once I've done that, I obviously then need to multiply by 100, which obviously I've made this question up, so I didn't check it beforehand. So I've actually got some ridiculously small value there. But you can see that this our estimate our estimation is very very accurate okay and that's essentially kind of covers everything that you need to do with these kinds of questions now i'll try and throw in some slightly harder ones that i love uh i can see from past papers but uh yeah if you can kind of do at least part b there that'll cover pretty much everything that always comes up and then it's things like part C and a few other slightly different things that you sometimes see show up. As always, you know, hit me up with the comments down below. I have been a little bit busy lately, but I do do my best to kind of get back to everyone within about 48 hours. And if you're new to my channel or if you've been here a while but haven't subscribed yet, just hit that subscribe button, help me out also you know helps you find me in the future if you if you need me again So if I want to do this in my calculator quite easily, I put my value in, 0 0.015, press equals, and then I can store it, store it as a letter. I've done it as A. Then I just need to do this as my expansion. So 1 minus 20A plus 180, oops, sorry, A squared minus 960 a cubed and there's my answer